So I had been doing some edge retention comparisons uh, lately. Uh, I wanted to check out the performance of a few sharpening stones and at the same time sort of confirm or falsify some of the ideas I had about edge retention in knives that I had sort of picked up from just working with the knives. Now the problem with trying to figure out uh, edge retention or any property actually when you're just using knives and not really doing any sort of counting or measuring is that the random scatter is so high it's very difficult to iron down the conclusion so you can often pick up some interesting ideas but in order to sort of iron out the true or false you want a more precise or accurate data set to sort of work with to make sure that your conclusions are actually based on the thing that you think is causing them so I picked two knives on the fairly opposite ends of the spectrum. And the nice thing about doing that is that it shows you the sort of biggest difference that you can see. And big differences are easy to measure. So it lets you know right away if your conclusions are sort of right or wrong. And then if you look at steels that are closer to sort of together in composition, you can expect similar behavior, but the difference in performance would be smaller. So, to start off, on one end, this is a Sford Mini Peasant in 15N20, which is a bandsaw blade steel. Very low carbide, and Sford hardens this to sort of the mid-50s. On the other end, Spyderco K2, collaboration with Faradmir, CPM10V, ultra-high carbide volume, and significantly harder. A couple of people have hardness tested theirs, and they're significantly above 60 Rockwell. So, very hard, ultra-high carbide, relatively soft for knife blade very low carbide steel. Now, uh, the first thing I did was I looked at edge retention on just brand new hemp rope, half inch. And as you would expect, very large difference. And the CPM 10V uh, coarse finish on the apex, on a draw, on a slice cut, significantly better edge retention. However, when I actually went to look at edge retention on this, which is a similar size rope, polypropylene, but this is not something that you'd buy in a store. This has actually come directly off of a crab pot. It's used. It's a few years old. I mean, the crab pots are hauled in, thrown on the ground, laid in stacks. This rope actually gets dirty. I mean, it is not clean. It is used rope. This is more like what you actually cut if you work with knives, unless you work in a factory. Most people actually working will tend to cut used and dirty materials. When I used boat knives on this rope, there was almost no difference in performance and edge retention. The edge retention was much, much lower, as you would expect, being a used and dirty rope. But not only was it just much more lower, boat knives were almost identical. There was no real significant statistical difference between the two of them. Now, how do you explain that? The difference was the method of blunting was completely different. When you were cutting new and uh, clean materials, the edge tends to blunt by just slow wear. Well, in terms of slow wear, the abrasion resistance of this steel is much, much greater than the abrasion resistance of this steel, especially since it's hardened about 10 Rockwell points softer. So on clean materials, big advantage. However, on dirty materials, the way the knives blunted was completely differently. The knives tended to chip right at the apex level, and they also tended to twist and deform. Well, in terms of chip resistance, this is not actually higher. This is. And in terms of deformation resistance, while this is higher than this, it's nowhere near as much as it has an advantage in abrasion resistance. So it has a slight advantage in deformation resistance. It's actually a disadvantage in terms of chipping. And when you add up all the factors on used materials, dirty materials, no significant difference in edge retention. One of the reasons, too, that I decided to do this, aside from what I was noting, I was cutting up some very dirty cardboard. And I noticed when I compared the edge retention performances of a few knives, uh, the sort of rankings were sort of the same in terms of order, but they were all clustered closer together. And then I did some more trials on cleaner type cardboard, and they, again, say the same rank in terms of order, but they spread right apart. And that got me to thinking that that could be one of the reasons why you tend to get so many wild different opinions on edge retention. If you've got dudes out there that are just working and they're cutting stuff like this, dirty materials, they're not going to have anywhere near the type of experience that someone does when they just sit down and they cut you new clean materials. 
Because again, the difference, the way that actually affects the apex is completely different. So they blunt by different mechanisms, which means they blunt depending on different properties. So in general, when a knife edge blunts, or the apex blunts rather, it's dependent on the strength and the toughness and the wear resistance, and to a lesser extent, things like corrosion resistance, if it's wet. So thinking about the big three, fracture, chipping, deformation, or wear, as you go to new and clean materials, you don't get as much deformation or as much fracture because there's no real hard particles that slam and twist into the edge. You get that sort of slow wear. So the interesting thing, the thing that I found kind of uh, mightn't be what you would think on its first glance, as you cut more harsher used materials, these basic inexpensive knives can actually hold their own. And again, as I've said before in regards to edge retention, you have to have the edge angle and the apex angle and the grit finish properly optimized. In this case, uh, both edges were set at 6 to 8 degrees per side and the apex bevels that I was using for most of the comparisons were 15 degrees per side. I also tried 25 degrees per side and I used an extra coarse DMT and a fine DMT finish. You got to make sure they're the same. Uh, if they're not the same, then you'll just see whatever the effect of that is. So, for example, if I sharpen this with a DMT coarse finish and I use this with a DMT extra fine finish, this would even have better edge retention on clean rope. So, again, you got to try to make these things as similar as possible, or you'll end up reaching a conclusion based on whatever thing is different rather than uh, the actual steel. But I thought that was uh, interesting and it just might be something to keep in mind. If you're looking for edge retention for a practical or functional purpose, uh, it might not be abrasion resistance at all important to what you actually um, are cutting. And the other thing of course is that if you do get very uh, abrasion resistant steels, uh, as the abrasion resistance goes up, grindability goes down. So you need very different st uh, stones in order to grind them. If you sharpen both these knives on uh, traditional stones like the Suhiro Chemical, something like that, which is a rather basic Japanese um, stone, uh, this can take anywhere from three to five times uh, as long to actually reset the edge bevel. And you can be up to, you know, 500 to 1,000 passes just to reset the edge bevel unless you recondition the stone because this steel is hard and abrasion resistant enough that it will wear down the surface of the stone. However, if you move to stones that are actually designed to cut these steel well, like the Sigma Power 2 series, um, the number of passes drops way down and both of them are sharp like within 30 seconds. So something else to consider. You do need rather specialty stones in order to grind something like this uh, rapidly.